All right, so now that we have our hinge, we need to start thinking about how we're going to place it on the sides of our doors. If you look right here, I know it's kind of hard to see. Let's see if you can get a better view. I estimated that there's about an inch difference between the top of our hinge and the edge of our door. And that's going to be the same down here on the bottom as well. After that, we can see that we need to split it up into one section, two sections, and three sections. There's a complicated way to do that with math, but there's also an easier way to do that with SketchUp. So what we're going to need to do is find the spot from our for the, the midpoint from our first hinge in relation to the top corner of the door right there. We know that our hinge has a height of three inches. So if we take that up extra inch from the top and add it to half of three, that gives us two and a half inches. So let's keep that dimension in mind. By this point, you guys should already have this done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat myself a little bit. I'm going to select the corners that are going to make up our door. And the way that I'm doing that is I'm holding down shift while I click on what it is that I want to select. To get those edges. Okay, from there, I'm going to copy and paste it and move that over here where my hinge is at. I'm going to find the midpoint for our door, which is real easy because it shows up with that teal circle. And let's see, did we make the, looks like we made the door about a half an inch. So we'll stick with that for now. So I'll select this side first push-pull, and I'll tell it half of an inch. I could write that as 1 backslash 2 or 0.5, whichever you want to do. That looks a little bit thinner than what we did over here. Sure enough, that's an inch. I think that a half inch is probably better. I don't think those doors are actually an inch of steel. So let's stick with the half inch for now. <clears throat> Since I've already bumped this one out a half inch, I don't even need to type in, I just need to snap. Okay, so we established before that if we want to find the midpoint here and snap it to the top, whoops, we need to go down an inch for the start of it and then down another inch and a half. So that's going to be a total of two and a half inches. So I'll just type in 2.5, enter. And now I have an endpoint that I can snap to. I'm just going to draw a line so I don't forget exactly where it's at. I'm going to do the same thing down here at the bottom. This time, instead of going down two and a half inches, obviously we're going to go up two and a half inches and it automatically snapped for me, which is awesome. And I'll do another line as a reference, just so it's easier to snap to. Okay, <clears throat> now I want to move it from the midpoint along this edge right here. So I'm going to draw a reference line, so it's going to allow me to snap to the midpoint. I just want to make sure it's right in the center, which looks like it is right there. Straight down. And I'm going to select my hinge. I'm going to go ahead and copy it for now so I can paste it later. And then I'm going to move it from Oof, it's giving us midpoints all over the place. But I believe that's what we want. I'm going to copy it again. And then I think it'll snap automatically to that midpoint, which is going to be handy later on. So I can just snap it right there. Perfect. I'll do the same thing up here. Paste. Ah, oh, darn it. It didn't move it from the midpoint. So we'll have to reselect the midpoint. <clears throat> Not too hard to find. Of 
Perfect. So now I'm going to draw another line from that midpoint, or now it's an endpoint, down to that endpoint right there. Hopefully it's going to select that. Oh, darn it. Okay, so that didn't work exactly like I wanted it to, but that's okay. There's a different way we can find out how long that line is. So endpoint to endpoint. We can see that that is 8 foot 5 inches. You can see that down in the bottom um, right corner. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a new line anywhere in space that is 8 foot 5 inches. And then hit enter. So what we could do <clears throat> is we could go into our calculator and figure out exactly how many inches that is and then divide by 3. But the math is a little bit messy. So instead of doing that, I'm going to select my line, right click, divide. It's asking for the number of segments down here. I'm going to tell it 3, meaning I'm going to split it up into 3 pieces like that. And hit enter. Then I'm going to take this hinge, copy and paste it one more time just for good measure. And then I'm going to move it from that midpoint again. Make sure we find the right midpoint. <clears throat> to our first third. And you can see red is not what we want. We want it to go green because that's the spot where we divided it into. Perfect. Do the same thing up here. V, control V to move from the midpoint. And endpoint is right there. And don't worry, I'll get to that student in just a minute. Oh, come on. Okay. So from there, I can take this whole assembly, move it <clears throat> from the bottom to that endpoint, and we should have our hinges all spaced. From there, I'm going to go in and delete all these extra lines that I don't want or need anymore. And then the last thing that I want to do is I want to make this into a component. So I'm going to angle my door so I'm looking at it more or less straight up. And then going from left to right, so I only select the things that are inside my rectangle. I'm going to select those components. I don't want to select those extra lines. So I'm going to hold down Shift and click to delete them from my selection. Then right click make component and I'm going to call that hinges 4 since I've already done this a couple times. That way when I select on any one of these hinges I can edit it just the component and I don't have to worry about selecting the door behind. <clears throat>